from the ceremony with the daughter and she's still to see her. Okay. When we're doing this, we ask for silence, please. The song that I'm going to sing when we're raising the pole is a welcoming song and a, and a thank you song. So these gentlemen are going to carry it over into place. And then when I start singing, the pole will be raised. So we just ask for silence while this is going on. Ready? No, no. Everybody come down a little closer. You, you'll remember from the invitation that, that uh, this was described as a semi-traditional potluck. Uh, we're doing a little bit that's right and a little bit that is not included. For example, uh, Steve Edelstein just uh, reminded us that, that the word potlatch means gift. And one of the traditions of, um, of a potlatch is that the that the host gives away all his worldly possessions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of the, that was one of the principal reasons. <laughs> the tradition that, that we'll uh, follow a little bit more is that the owner gives a very long and boring speech. <laughs> this one will perhaps not be too long. Uh, an another tradition is that the uh, carver traditionally dances and the elders sing and uh, the deal that I made with, with Francis was that, that uh, since he's a modern carver with two left feet he would not be required to dance if I, I would not be required to give away all my worldly possessions. <laughs> so we have a deal. Uh, but he did sing. Uh, young man though he may be, he, uh, took the role of the elders in addition. Uh, part of the tradition is that, that uh, the meaning of the place and the pole is, is uh, talked about, and at the end, after Francis has talked, anyone else who has anything to say will be welcome to talk as well. Um, I 
thought it might be useful to point out that the, the Maple Ridge is not just a couple of words that were made up. There, there is, in fact, a ridge line here, which those of you from Lexington would, would know to identify as the edge of the urban service area. But the water flows towards the town branch of the Elkhorn on the other side and in this direction toward the Kentucky River on the other side. And as you know, Daniel Boone's Fort, Boone's Fort, just a couple miles down in that direction. And so the notion is that when, when Boone and his, his uh, cohorts uh, were, were headed up in this direction, they would reach this ridge and look down toward the area where the other settlers had settled. And I guess the maples at the time would have been the, the box elders that, that did the kind of maple. There's a big one over there. And there's several around, and now they're reseeding themselves and, and uh, joining with uh, 20 varieties of maples that we planted here to, to uh, restore the place. Um, I told that story about Maple Ridge to my son Jonathan when he was in town over the holidays, and, and he, uh, he asked me, uh, when, when did you hear that story? And I said, well, actually, I heard the story for the first time at the same time you heard it, because I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> this one's 10 years old, and so I, I have to take a little bit of liberty uh, with this. So you can see it's broken into three uh, series of objects. The one on the bottom is the bear. Uh, again, uh, not unrelated to the connection with Daniel Boone. You know that bears roam these woods when these were the woods the first time. And uh, again, if you've heard us talk about it or, or lived by or been nearby, you know that the, as the trees have come back, the animals have started coming back to the place. The blue heron comes every day and the fox. For all the damage that the Boones did, it's now restoring itself and, and Boone is gone, uh, disabused of his honor by political correctness, and, and Bear has returned. <laughs> the center symbol is, is a human person holding what appears to be a shield. Uh, the, the shield is actually made of copper. It's a traditional Northwestern uh, symbol of wealth. The copper uh, metal came over with uh, the ships when, when they arrived on the, the west coast of Canada and north of the United States. And copper was, was taken and molded into little shields and, and was used as a symbol of wealth, which we take uh, symbolically, I guess. And it's, it's a little ironic when an Anglo looks at it and thinks of the copper as being well. Copper, of course, is not gold and not silver, not platinum, and ordinarily uh, a base of metal, which suggests to us that it's uh, that, that true wealth is what's in the eye of, uh, what's beautiful to the eye of the beholder. Uh, him or her. The symbol on the top is the owl, which in all the traditions is, is the symbol of wisdom. It means a little something special to us because the first day that we spent in this house, uh, a big old barn owl, I guess, perched on a, one of the then little sycamore trees in the front of the house and stayed and stayed and stayed and wouldn't leave. Uh, by the next morning, it was gone, uh, and we haven't seen it again. So whether, whether it was uh, providing us a welcome or wondering how crazy we were, we're not absolutely sure. You see that this particular aisle that we take to symbolize that is winking at you. Uh, you, you see one eye is shut and one eye is open, so uh, I guess what he's saying is it really doesn't matter much. <laughs> so with that said, I guess about 10 years ago when Francis had a great piece of wood and looked for what was in the wood to find the spirit in it, he can't have known in his mind because this was a cornfield in these days and, and Jose had only put a pencil to paper. This place didn't exist, and certainly didn't know us, but somehow in, in Francis's uh, spirit, if not in his mind, he, he uh, made this object that symbolizes to us renewal and true wealth and uh, welcome and wisdom and who knows what. my great pleasure to welcome everybody here and I mean, we're just thrilled to um, share this very happy occasion uh, with so many of you and uh, we're especially just delighted that Francis and Beverly came
came down for this. I mean, this is you know just a tremendous treat for us uh, to have him here while we raise his soul and, and to share this. And then I also um, just am so appreciative of everybody that's come and come from some people from great distances. Um, Jennifer, my daughter, uh, flew in from Palo Alto. I mean, she just can't miss a party. <laughs> <laughs> and then we are just, you know, so pleased that um, our good friend um, Jerry Levin came in from New York and that our good friends um, Carol and Lee Siegelman came in from Washington. We finally got them here. <laughs> so I made Lee help with the poll. And then our friends from Louisville and our friends from Cincinnati and Columbus and then all our Lexington and Nicholasville and Jessamine County and everywhere else. So thank you, you know, so much for coming. I would like, uh, this is one of the last times I'm going to be able to do, use my power of <laughs> politics. <laughs> um, as you all know, we're going to have an election on uh, November 7th. <laughs> I'm no longer going to be chair of the Kentucky Commission on Women. I'm no longer going to be able to get Kentucky colonelship. <laughs> and so I would like to take this opportunity to make the Honorable Francis Horn a Kentucky colonel. And Francis, this is a, a special thing for us Kentuckians to do, to honor special people um, in Kentucky, in the United States, in Canada, and from all around the world. And we're just delighted to make you a Kentucky colonel. <laughs> from Duncan, British Columbia. It's uh, right on Vancouver Island. It's right on the west coast and we live right in the heart of the rainforest and that. So I'd like to thank everybody for making us feel so welcome here. And to Bob and Kenny, I'd like to thank you for making us feel welcome. It's been a, a fantastic trip. A um, little bit of history on the poll itself. We, we don't call them totem poles, like this is something that's, um, it, it's been something that I, I consider categorized and we never did worship these poles. They were, he's told an actual family history. He stood right in front of our, our magnificent longhouses and the, the symbol at the top of the pole would represent that particular family. They, they were an actual family tree and they, they told of events in a person's life births, deaths, marriages, puberty, things like that. And when you when you came to our villages on the west coast, everything was traveled by water, by canoe. You'd be traveling on canoe. And you'd see somebody's pole, because that, you'd, go, that you'd identify that person by the totem pole in front of their longhouse. So you'd know where to go as soon as you see that pole. The figures on a dial represent wisdom in our culture. The man holding copper represents the wealth in our culture, in our heart, how we feel spiritually in that. And the bear is a symbol of strength. And so to Bob Miller and Kenny and your family, I, I couldn't think of a more appropriate place than by the water for this poll. And also in closing, I'd, I'd like to thank Tim too for the work that he's done. We never forget people, whoever, no matter what they've done for us. And so, on behalf of Hills Gallery and Devin, myself, we'd like to present you with this drum. Oh, neat! Play a song. <laughs> Your turn to sing, Penny. <laughs> Would We'd anybody like else something. like to say anything? Now sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like Incredible. to say thanks to you all for bringing this uh, other piece of culture to this part of the country. I mean, it's a real honorable thing to do. It's a great setting for it.
sure I do with it. <laughs> no, no, it's room. I think. Yeah. Thank you.